So good morning everybody. We are here today with Master Hendrik Chung from Australia to get some further information through about the Wing Chun martial art who is representing in the world. So Master Hendrik, welcome again to Italy. Uh, Thank you. What is actually, uh, from how long have you been training Wing Chun and what is this martial art representing for you? I've been training Wing Chun since I was about eight years old. Um, I started to probably get more serious about it when I was 14, mm -hmm. 15. Uh, Wing Chun it represents to me, it more so represents uh, a legacy. So my, my father, he learned from uh, Grandma Sita Man, and he, I want to continue that legacy, I want to continue teaching it, I want to con continue spreading the knowledge of Wing Chun. Right, so, uh, what does it mean for you uh, being the son of Grandmaster Chung? And do you think the fact of having such an important person as a father has somehow influenced your choice to practice Wing Chun and to become a master as well? Uh, yeah, that choice, it, it definitely influenced my choice. So, I, my father, he originally didn't really want me to, to learn, uh, to have it, not, to, not not to learn, but to have it as a career, okay. so to speak. But when he started saying that I was, you know, more interested in Wing Chun and martial arts in general, he, he started taking it more seriously, started yeah. teaching me more. Um, for me, what it means to have the Grandmaster as a father, it just means that uh, I have to work harder as far as training, as far as teaching. To, if anything, it kind of pushes me to be better. Because okay. you always have, uh, they look at you know, what my father's done, they look mm -hmm. at um, all his accomplishments, and it's very hard you know, for me to all really right. live up to that. And you don't want to be, it makes, me wa it makes me more determined to ensure that I'm not just writing of his name, that I do have something right. to offer that I can teach. So definitely well. a positive in input to improve. Yeah, definitely, it just pushes me to be better. Yeah. How do you think uh, Wing Chun will evolve in the next future? Um, I can't, I can't say specifically, but I mean, all martial arts evolve, it's just the way it is. I, I find Wing Chun, it's, it is very set in its ways, mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot of room for it to evolve. I mean, you're already starting to, uh, you're already starting to see people use just a, like little bits of it in, you know, sports and combat martial arts. You, you now see a lot of it more, sorry, not combat martial arts, sports martial arts. Uh, you now see a lot of, you know, Wing Chun in movies. And before you never really saw any oh, yeah. Wing Chun in movies yeah. before. So uh, because of those influences, it's gonna, I think it's gonna end up evolving to being not just, you know, not just for kind of self-defense, not just a traditional martial art, but it'll be able to be integrated more into uh, combat sports. Mm -hmm. It'll be able to in be integrated a lot more into movies as well. Okay. So it's, I think that's just gonna, it'll end up changing the techniques a little bit, uh, depending on what, what's popular at the time. Mm -hmm. But I think it'll be a positive influence on it, definitely. Uh, who do you recommend should try to, to train and study Wing Chun? Is there maybe a, a particular suggestion for women as well? And is there an age you would suggest, uh, uh, or do you think that someone is the most indicated for a person who wants to approach this martial art? From what I've seen, as far as like people who, so I mean, Wing Chun, it's the only martial art in the world that's developed by a woman. So I mean, of course, I'd recommend it to, to women to learn. Uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the few martial arts that doesn't require, you know, a huge amount of strength, a huge amount of uh -huh. speed or power to utilize. So of course, yes, yeah, the first thing I would recommend it to women to learn. Uh, none of that, but I've seen a lot of people who have come from, you know, very um, physically demanding martial arts, yeah. like whether it's modern, like Western martial arts, you know, like kickboxing, MMA, or whether you see people who used to fight in, you know, karate competitions. Uh -huh. So those are physically demanding, and as you get older, you it's less and less of the techniques you can use. Okay. So I've seen a lot of people who uh, end up transferring over to Wing Chun after years and years mm -hmm. of just hard, uh, like hard martial arts yeah. to to train, very physically demanding mm -hmm. ones. 
to Wing Chun, which is a lot more of like an economical yeah. movement. You don't have to, it doesn't require a huge amount of physical strength to use. And they find that transition great because if, if they have a lot of reoccurring injuries, you know, they can still practice some martial art that they love, but they're not getting the same kind of injuries from, you know, high kicks or like, you know, kind of having to twist or spin or jump or anything mm -hmm. like that. So. That's all right. So even for kids would be the right age to start? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a there's a typical age uh -huh. limit. Um, for, for kids, I mean, around anything younger than six, you end up, uh, it's, it should be a game. It like be a game. Fun yeah. Because you, you can't, you can't go into too deep with technique yeah. with little kids but after that yeah it's i mean kids can learn it's it's not a hard martial art to pick up okay. it's quite easy to learn uh, you know, adults even you know mid like middle-aged adults right. as well they can pick it up quite easily too also a lot of other martial arts you know you, to be really good at it yeah. you have to start very early on in life so. okay. what do you think are uh, the most important are important benefits we get training this martial art. Uh, Wing Chun is one of the few martial arts that trains contact reflexes. Mm -hmm. So, as a, I mean, all martial arts, you know, you rely on visual reflexes, and there's not many martial arts that train contact reflexes. We train our contact reflexes through chi sao. Mm -hmm. uh, in your, you gain, you know, reaction. Your yeah. reaction time it gets much quicker. You gain on like good balance too. Yeah. From like in the sense, in the end, I mean, fighting in general, it's all about balance. Yeah. And Wing Chun, it's one of those martial arts that you you have to be balanced to Absolutely. be able to utilize. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, through training, through the physical training, especially depending on how hard you work with it, you're gonna gain like the physical attributes like you know so speed and power yeah so there's there's that too how many hours do you normally train per day to be such a good uh, teacher um, usually, usually about two hours um two hours per day six days a week uh -huh. i don't have any kind of specific times that i do i just make sure that i everything in the during the week like as far as training goes or in the day I just I just give myself what I need to do and I'll train it at any time of day okay. um, if I don't feel like training it in the morning I won't train it in the morning I'll train it later All right. but as long as I'm training you know, six, five, five, six days a week it's, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> right. mm, did, you, did you learn from uh, someone else apart from uh, your, your father? yeah or, originally I was taken to the kids classes on the Saturdays I just started learning the same way that everyone everyone does I wasn't given any any special treatment the I started learning in the yeah, kids classes on Saturdays okay. uh, I'm not gonna I won't drop any names of you know who taught me or anything like that but my, my, my dad always he always encouraged me to learn from learn from different instructors because everyone has something different to offer mm -hmm. okay just because in you know, I mean the this is my dad's grandmaster. Like he had, you know, he had a lot of knowledge and a lot of things to give. And his, as far as I'm concerned, in Wing Chun, he's a genius. But there's always, you know, you get a different perspective through learning yeah. through different teachers. And I think it's important to acknowledge that because there's not it's in anything. There's not yeah. just only one way to do things or to learn things. There's many different ways, and it's interesting as well learning from you know people with different body types i mean people who yeah. are, people who are much taller they're not going to teach the same or they're not going to use the same techniques as someone uh -huh. smaller yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's good to it, it's good to know how different body types um yeah. especially when you're teaching different types of people so you have to be able to accommodate for that and you learn that through you learn that through training with um, or learning from other instructors yeah cool. he always encouraged me so how do you feel uh, Wing Chun uh, in Italy and what are the main suggestions you would give to people who are training this martial art? Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm happy with, uh, uh, with uh, Wing Chun in Italy. It's, uh, it's always interesting to go to different countries and see how they train. Uh, they've obviously got, they've got a pro good instructor here, so they're in good hands. Um, my suggestion for them would just be, I mean, train, train hard and train your basics. Don't ever neglect them. 
that's uh, the main thing. It's very easy to get caught up in advanced yeah. techniques and um, forget your foundations. So yeah. always, always, always train on. So Master Andrew, thank you very much for your time. We hope you will enjoy your time uh, in Italy and surely we look forward to participate in your seminar today that it will surely be a great experience for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.